Hi everyone, hope you're all okay. Uh, I'm going to read you another story from this book. You can see that. Uh, Mrs Pepperpot stories. Okay, this one is called Mrs Pepperpot and the Mechanical Doll. It was two days before Christmas. Mrs Pepperpot hummed and sang as she trotted round her kitchen. She was so pleased to be finished with all her Christmas preparations. She'd made some sausages and now all she had to do was to brew herself a cup of coffee and sit down for a rest. How lovely that Christmas is here, she said. Then everybody's happy, especially the children. That's the best of all, to see them happy and well. The old woman was almost like a child herself because of the knack she had of suddenly shrinking to the size of a pepper pot. She was thinking about all this while she was making her coffee and she had just poured it into the cup when there was a knock at the door. Come in, she said, and in came a little girl who was so pale and thin. Poor child, wherever do you live? said Mrs Pepperpot. I'm sure I've never seen you before. I'm Hannah. I live in the little cottage at the edge of the forest, said the child. And I'm just going round all the houses to ask if anybody has any old Christmas decorations left over from last year. Glitter or paper chains or glass balls or anything. You know, have you got anything you don't need? I expect so, Hannah, answered Mrs Pepperpot and went up into the attic to fetch the cardboard box with all the decorations. She gave it all to the little girl. How lovely. Can I really have all that? You can, said Mrs Pepperpot, and you shall have something else as well. Tomorrow I will bring you a big doll. Oh, I don't believe that, said Hannah. Why not? You haven't got a doll. That's simple. I'll buy one, said Mrs Pepperpot. I'll bring it over tomorrow afternoon, but I must be home by six o'clock because it's Christmas Eve. How wonderful if you can come tomorrow afternoon. I shall be all alone then. Father and mother both go out to work, you see, and they don't get back until after the church bells have rung. So the little girl went home and Mrs Pepperpot went down to the toy shop and bought a big doll. But when she woke up next morning, there she was, once more, no bigger than a pepper pot. How provoking, she said to herself. On this day of all days, when I have to take the doll to Hannah. Never mind, I expect I'll manage. After she had dressed, she tried to pick up the doll, but it was much too heavy for her to lift. I'll have to go without it, she thought, and opened the door and set off. But oh dear, it had been snowing hard all night, and the little old woman soon sank deep in the snowdrift. The cat was sitting in front of the house. When she saw something moving in the snow, she thought it was a mouse and jumped on it. Stop, stop, shouted Mrs Pepperpot. Keep your claws to yourself. Can't you see it's me just shrunk again? I beg your pardon, said the cat and started walking away. Wait a minute, said Mrs Pepperpot, to make up for your mistake, you can give me a ride down to the main road. The cat was quite willing, so she lay down and let the old woman climb on her back. When they got to the main road, the cat stopped. Can you hear anything? asked Mrs Pepperpot. Yes, I think it's the snowplough, said the cat, so we'll have to get out of the way or we'll be buried in snow. I don't want to get out of the way, said Mrs Pepperpot, and she sat down in the middle of the road and waited till the snowplough was right in front of her. Then she jumped up and landed smack on the front tip of the plough. There she sat, clinging on for dear life and enjoying herself hugely. Look at me, the little old woman driving the snowplough, she laughed. When the snowplough had almost reached the door, of Hannah's little cottage, she climbed on the edge near, nearest the side of the road and before you could say Jack Robinson, she had landed safely on the great mound of snow thrown up by the plough. 
From there, she could walk right across Hannah's hedge and slide down the other side. She was shaking the snow off her clothes on the doorstep when Hannah came out and picked her up. Are you one of those mechanical dolls that you wind up? Said, asked Hannah. No, said Mrs Pepperpot. I am a woman who can wind myself up, thank you very much. Help me brush off the snow and let's go inside. Are you perhaps the old woman who shrinks at the size of a pepper pot? Of course I am, silly. Where's the doll you were going to bring me? Asked Hannah when they got inside. I've got it at home. You'll have to go back with me and fetch it. It's too heavy for me. Shouldn't you have something to eat now that you've come to see me? Would you like a biscuit? And the little girl held out a biscuit in the shape of a ring. Thank you very much, said Mrs Pepperpot, and popped her head through the biscuit ring. Oh, how the little girl laughed. I quite forgot you were so small, she said. Let me break it into little pieces so that you can eat it. Then she fetched a thimble and filled it with fruit juice. Have a drink, she said. Thank you, said Mrs Pepperpot. After they played a good lot of games, ride a cock horse with Mrs Pepperpot sitting on Hannah's knee and hide and seek. But the little girl had an awful time trying to find Mrs Pepperpot. She hid in such awkward places. When they'd finished playing, Hannah put on her coat and with Mrs Pepperpot in her pocket, she went off to fetch her beautiful big doll. Oh, thank you, she exclaimed when she saw it. But do you know, she added, I would really rather have you to play with all the time. You can come and see me again if you like, said Mrs Pepperpot. I am often as small as a pepperpot and then it's nice to have a little help around the house. And of course, we can play games as well. So now the little girl often spends her time with Mrs Pepperpot. She looks ever so much better and they often talk about the day Mrs Pepperpot arrived on the snowplough and about the doll that she gave Hannah. The end. I hope you all like that and I hope you're all doing really well uh, and I will come back tomorrow and read you another story, okay? Uh, see you all soon. Bye!